Next, we're going to look at the components of an embedded system. And we said that the embedded system had a computer inside. So we'll represent the computer as this little integrated circuit. And we're going to embed this into many things. We could put them in our cars, our automotive. We could put them in our bodies. We're actually going to embed computers inside of people. Then the medical electronics has a lot of embedded systems. We could put it in our toys, our consumer electronics. We're going to put it in our homes. The military uses a lot of embedded devices. We can put it in our cell phones, in anything that has to do with communication. And lastly, but not least, is we will see that embedded systems are ubiquitous in industry. So industrial embedded systems are robots, um, inventory control, manufacturing. Uh, this is a very large sector for embedded systems. All right, so now let's talk about the, the computer. All right, as we see, embedded systems are everywhere. They're estimated over five billion of these embedded systems in our world. And these are computers hidden inside of devices. So let's look inside an embedded system. It has a computer. And the, when you say computer, most people think of an x86, uh, which is the standard computer in personal computers. And, but now we have uh, coming along ARM computers, and the ARM computer that you probably most aware are the A series, which are in your cell phones, your iPads, and your uh, and your types of devices. But the computers we're going to talk about are ARM computers in the M series or the micro controllers, and we'll see what that is in a moment. There's another series while we're on it, the R series, which is for real time. A bunch of those in your cell phones as well. Okay. Inside the computer, we also have memory to store things. So this is our storage element. And, and what you're going to learn in this class is I.O. Is I.O. is where the interface happens. This is the glue which will connect the components together. And so we will see that this I.O. will have a couple of components. There will be hardware, mechanical connections, electrical connections, and special software. And before we go on, let's make a list of the important considerations when building an embedded system. First and foremost is the ability to test or to verify. We're going to place embedded systems in important life critical situations where if we make a mistake, we could lose not only money, but loss of life. So when building an embedded system, the ability to test or to verify it works will be extremely important. Of course, we're engineers and we would like to make some money. So another important consideration in embedded systems is the, is the ability to make profit, which as you know, is a combination of market share, and that's making something that everybody wants to buy, and reducing 
the cost, which is both development cost and manufacturing cost. As we saw also that these systems are powered often by batteries, so power, which affects size and heat and cost, is extremely important. Size, we want to fit it in our pocket, we want to embed it in our bridges, we're going to carry it around inside of our hearts. Uh, we need to make sure that things are fit. And the last consideration that we will have for embedded systems is this idea of time. In many computer systems, it's important to get the correct answer. And in embedded systems, that's still true, is we want the correct answer. And in an embedded system, we not only need the correct answer, but we need the correct answer at the right time. When your engine is flying towards you, you want your airbag to go off before the engine gets there. So, in order to produce systems that can behave responsively to our problems, we're going to have a number of facilities to manage time. Okay, what's next?